Welcome back. We're still covering crossover methods for uh, permutation representations. In this method, in this video, we're going to be looking at the partially mapped crossover. In this method, we build an offspring by choosing a subsequence of elements from one parent, and basically, we try to preserve the order and position of as many elements as possible from the second parent. The subsequence of elements, or that chunk that we copy from the first uh, parent to the child is selected by choosing two random cut points and um, by using that uh, uh, we use the, those two cut points as boundaries for the swapping operation so we've seen that uh, uh, before now the partially mapped crossover algorithm works as follows please pay attention it can be confusing on the next slide we have an example which will hopefully make things clearer. Pay attention, if you don't get it first time, then there's no harm of watching it again. So we have two parents, P1 and P2. We randomly choose a segment and copy it from P1 to the child. And then we start at the first crossover point. We look for elements in that segment of P2. So in the corresponding segment of P2, we find the elements which have not been copied yet. For each of these elements, we call them I elements, we look in the offspring, we look in the child, to see what element J has been copied in its place from P1. Notice now, we're dealing with elements and their places. So, for each element, I, these are the elements in the segment in P2, in the segment that we copied, but now in P2, which have not been copied yet, we look in the offspring and see which elements have been copied in its places from P1, we call those elements J elements. What we do now is we place I into the position occupied by J in P2. Since we know that we will not be putting J there as it's already in the offspring, right? J is already in the offspring, as J is already in the offspring, right? So let's put that red. Yes. So J is already in the offspring. Now, if the place occupied by J in P2 has already been filled in the offspring by an element K, then what we do, we put I in the position occupied by K in P2, right? I hope that makes sense. As I mentioned, the idea will be much clearer when we use an example. Having dealt with the elements from the crossover segment, the rest of the offspring can be filled from the second parent directly into their corresponding positions. So the problematic part is the elements in the uh, um, the random segment that we choose, the elements in P2 which have not yet been copied to P1. Let's have a look at an example. At an example. So we have two parents, parent 1 parent 2. Let's say we randomly choose that segment, we copy it directly to the child. So that's the first cut point, this is the starting cut point, that's the ending cut point we copy them directly from the first child and then we look at the corresponding segment now in the second parent we find the elements which have not been copied yet so 8 has it been copied no 2 hasn't been copied 6 is there and 5 is there so my i elements if you remember from this step 2 and 3 the i elements now are 8 and 2 right so what we do now is we, f we try to find the corresponding elements now in the offspring, in the child, or maybe even in the first parent, I. I'm sorry, there's a mapping between 8 and 4 and a mapping between 2 and 5. So my J elements now are 4 and 5. So I is 8, it maps to 4, uh, and I here is 2, it maps to 5, right? These are the I elements and these are the J elements. So what we do, as we mentioned before, is place i in the position occupied by j in p2 so let's have a look at j here for 8 i is 8 j is 4 in p2 so look at j4 in p2 4 is there we directly put 8 in place of 4 and as you can see 8 goes there directly right because the place was not occupied however there is a small problem what if that place is occupied so as we mentioned here that place is empty, right? Which is the place of 4 in P2. The place of J in P2 is empty. We copy I directly. 8, we put it there. But if we look at 2, 
two maps to five so look, let's have a look at where's five in p2 five is there and if we look at the child well there is an element seven so how we deal with that how do we deal with that that is k here okay that is k here what we do is we find k okay and we find the position of k in p2 now and we put the i there in that position but now in the child so k7 and let's find k in p2 k is there we put i in place of k right in the position of k in the second parent so 2 goes there hope that makes sense the rest of it is copied directly as you can see 2 here goes in place of 7 the place of 7 in the second parent but not in the first parent the rest of the elements are copied directly from the second parent so we end up with 9 3 2 4 5 6 7 1 8 hope it makes sense thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video